Hello and welcome to Witch Please, a fortnightly podcast about the Harry Potter world. I'm Hannah McGregor. And this week I'm bringing you a very special mini-sode based on a live event I had the pleasure of taking part in. I was contacted by listener Andrea Leuven to let me know about some live readings of Harry Potter and the Cursed Child happening right here in my new hometown of Vancouver. She ended up putting me in touch with local theater maker and costume designer Laura Fukumoto and Port Key Productions, who put on a free community reading last weekend in a downright spooky Rosicrucian temple. For copyright-related reasons, I could only record a small portion of the reading, but I also got a chance to chat with the organizers, actors, and audience. So sit back, or run faster, and enjoy this small sample of Port Key Productions' live reading of Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Great. Hi. Hey. Hi. This is like a really stupidly large um, uh, pop filter, but that's what it is. I'm sure that it makes <laughs> my voice sound like a beautiful, beautiful jazz queen. <laughs> that's precisely what it's going to do. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so will you start us off by telling us um, who you are and what we're doing here in this really exciting room? Uh, my name is Laura Fukumoto. I work in theater and I love Harry Potter a lot. Uh, and I have for a very long time. And this, I wouldn't call it a theater. It's a a historical church building uh, in the, you know, Oak and King Edward neighborhood. Um, It's being rezoned right now. So this building actually might be torn down or converted, which I think is really, you've walked into like the biggest debate in Vancouver right now, (laughs) actually. Um, But uh, my friend Michael lives here and uh, it is just a neat spot. It is, in fact, the only spot I could find um, to host this reading, and uh, I say community reading. In theater, we do a lot of stage readings. Um, This is much more uh, relaxed than that because uh, not all the characters are cast. (laughs) So are some of the characters cast? Like, have you figured out the main roles? Yes, so um, I have stepped up, and I'm going to be reading Albus. That's exciting. (laughs) Um, We have... uh, another person playing Scorpius, and then outside of that, it's a little bit jumbled, but uh, my fiance is definitely playing Voldemort. He's been practicing his goblin voice <laughs> for months. He's just got that one line over and over. But. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And also, uh, he does a very good Scottish accent, so spoiler alert, um, there's an incomprehensible Scottish character somewhere. Oh, I remember that character. Oh yeah, that's exciting. I'll try to record that part. Um, So what inspired you guys to get together and do a community reading of The Cursed Child? Um, I just wanted, I just wanted to host something. I mean, it's, it's uh, like I was saying before, it's kind of notoriously hard to produce things in Vancouver because venues cost money and it costs money to get the rights for things. So uh, here we are on the fringe. Uh, <laughs> doing things maybe not entirely above the water, above the board, is that the phrase? Um, but it's friends. It's friends getting together, yeah. reading together, yeah. which is what uh, every single thing I put on the internet says, in case <laughs> anybody asks you. <laughs> well, that's, I mean, that's been the contentious thing, right? That this is a play and it's meant to be read, but there was a theater group in New York that tried to get together and do a fundraiser with a cursed child reading and they got shut down. Yeah, I did read about that. Uh, I've been following all of the readings, the community readings, I'm doing air quotes, scare quotes, um, uh, across Canada. And I've, um, uh, I mentioned, uh, I contacted like the HowlRound Theater Company in Toronto. And I said, hey guys, like, did anyone bother you? Um, And they just had to make sure that it said absolutely free. We're not gaining any profit. Um, Like they really, you can't even uh, get a charity on board because then you would be asking for money, right? And that's, that's the problem with the copyright law, but I respect that deeply as a person who also makes art. So it's one of those, yeah, it's one of those things where 
how much do you protect the art and the artist and them making their money, um, but also like allow for creative people to get together and not necessarily have all of the paperwork that yeah. you would need to do. And yeah. yeah, if we went, if we went 100% like message somebody, send a letter somewhere to ask for rights, this wouldn't have happened. Yeah. Absolutely. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one of our followers was tweeting this morning that um, her big complaint about the play and about the writing of the play is that it, as written, could not be put on by a small theatre company. No. That it would just be an incredibly expensive production. So it's sort of going against the spirit of theatre in a lot of ways. As, as a professional theatre maker, I had to turn off that entire half of my brain in order to read and enjoy it. Um, I had to say, this is purely just for reading. Um, because it's, it is unproducible. It's an unproducible play, which is uh, a shame, but I can see why and how. I mean, like them uh, having part one and part two in London is like them making, uh, you know, Hogwarts at Disney World. It's just, it's another destination yeah. for fans. And I know I'm never going to get to either of those places anytime soon. So I was like, look, we have fans in Vancouver. There's not a lot of outlets for Harry Potter fans in Vancouver. So why not make it ourselves? So do you think most of the people here tonight are going to be Harry Potter fans? Uh, absolutely, yeah. And like my friends, but also some new friends too. Like here you are, <laughs> all the way from Edmonton. I mean, I live here now. You live here now, okay. Yes, I do. we got Hannah. <laughs> I'm always so afraid that I'm going to fuck up the technology. <laughs> All right, will you tell us your name and what you're up to here tonight? My name is Nicole Sakia, and I'm here. I'm part of the group that organized this little event, and then I'm also going to be reading the stage directions tonight, so that's going to be fun. <laughs> so you are like our narrator. I guess so, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm just uh, going to guide us through this experience and see what happens. <laughs> That's beautiful. Did you choose the role of reading stage directions? I did. Um, I was helping with uh, finding people to read, and uh, I just realized that, yeah, so Albus and Scorpius, huge roles, but also someone's going to need to read the stage directions the whole time. And I'm like, so someone has to do that, so we should just do it. And then I was like, well, I can read, so I will do that. <laughs> Show off. I'm literate. Mm. <laughs> have you read the play before? Yes, I have. Yeah, um, it was really cute. Um, my coworkers, I was talking about it, and I was like, I always have this great tradition of like going and like getting the new Harry Potter book with like my mom. It was like a thing I did. It was always a thing I did with my mom since I was a little kid. And I was like, it's kind of sad now. Like I'm realizing that I'm an adult because like I don't have my mom to take to go buy the new Harry Potter, and I was kind of bummed about it. And then like I came in the next day, and they'd all bought it for me. My coworkers, I was like, you guys are the cutest people in the world. I have to go now. <laughs> I can't work. I have to read this immediately. Um, and uh, so it came to me in a really beautiful way. <laughs> that is an incredibly touching story. Isn't it? Yeah. I, like, I actually was like at work and I have like a strict rule, like don't cry at work. Like I don't like crying at work. Yeah. I mean, I always, I always break it at every job I've had, but I try really hard. cried at like every job I have. Yeah. Right? Working is tough sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I definitely cried. I was like, I have to go. I'm going to take a walk around the block because like you guys are too cute. So I'll be back. <laughs> Good, like crying because your coworkers are so lovely. It's like a good rather than crying because like your boss is harassing yeah. you. Like. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> some some pretty good some pretty good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take it. So, I feel like if I was gonna read a role for this, the stage directions would have been high on my list because the stage directions in this play are bananas. Oh yeah. Like it's it's kind of I mean especially because it was this script was like definitely published for people to read it because obviously not everyone can make it to the production. Yeah. Um, so I just feel like the stage directions this are unlike pretty much any stage direction for a play I've ever read. Yeah. Um, so I'm excited to see uh, kind of where it goes. Like I've read it in my head, but I've like definitely not read it all out loud. So it's going to be interesting. Oh yeah, you have some uh, some stylistic choices to make. Yeah, and like hypothetically, I might have to do some like Voldemort voices, and I'm just like, I don't know if I'm like ready for that like mentally, but I might have to jump in there. Or spiritually, like that's just a lot. That's a lot to take on. Yeah. <laughs> It's kind of a burden. <laughs> well, well, thank you for doing it for all of us. It's my pleasure. <laughs> you 
tell us your name and what brought you here today? My name is Heather Lefoy, and my dad will be reading tonight, so I'm very excited to come and support him <laughs> and listen to him, because I haven't actually read the full book all the way through yet. Oh. I know, it's terrible. Did you stop on purpose because you knew you were going to see it live? I wanted to savor it, okay. kind of, so I'm trying to stretch it out, but okay. then this happened, so okay. I'll get all of it tonight. <laughs> so it's going to spoil, I guess not spoilers, I guess just the actual experience. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it'll be so much fun. Yeah. Yes. Were you at all hesitant to read it when you found out that it was in a play format? Uh, no, because I'm, uh, I could see how that would bother some people, but I'm, I enjoy acting too. So I actually thought it was fun to see it in a different, yeah. different way. Okay. Yeah. Can I, can I get you in on this? Will you tell us your name and what brought you here tonight? Uh, my name's Norm and uh, I came here to read uh -huh. as part of the new book. So looking forward to this for sure. Do you know what part you're going to be reading? I'll be reading uh, Albus Dumbledore. Uh, Uncle Vernon and Amos Diggory. Are those parts cross cast in the play, like in the book, or did you select various parts? No, they were selected for me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Have you read all of the Harry Potter books? Oh, yes, read all of them and some of them multiple times uh, uh, aloud to various. Uh, <laughs> to, to my daughters, to our friends' sons, to our nephew and niece, and multiple others. So yes, um, I've read a lot of the books multiple times. Did your dad read them out loud to you? Oh yes, it was heavenly. In fact, one night the power went out, and I just have this great memory of being by the fire, mm -hmm. and he just went into Harry Potter, and it was it's one of my favorite memories. That's so really it makes it extra special for tonight. That's really lovely. Mm -hmm. How did you hear about the reading? Uh, about the reading tonight, um, I read, where did we find, that was uh, on Facebook, I believe. And um, so then I just followed up and said, yes, that sounds like a wonderful thing, and here we are. sits with piles of paper in front of her in Harry's messy office. She is slowly sorting through it all. Harry enters in a rush. He's bleeding from a graze on his cheek. How did it go? It was true. Theodore not? In custody. And the time turner itself? Harry reveals the time turner. It shines out alluringly. Is it genuine? Does it work? It's not just an hour reversal turner. It goes back further. We don't know anything yet. I wanted to try it out there, but... But then wiser heads prevailed. Well, now we have it. And you're sure you want to keep it? I don't think we have a choice. Look at it. It's entirely different to the time turner I had. Apparently wizardry has moved on since we were kids. You're bleeding. He checks his face in the mirror. He dabs obsessively with his robes. Don't worry, it'll go with the scar. What are you doing in my office, Hermione? I was anxious to hear about Theodore not, and thought I'd check whether you'd kept your promise and were on top of your paperwork. <laughs> Turns out I'm not. No, you're not. Harry, how can you get any work done in this chaos? He waves his wand and the papers and the books transform into neat piles. He smiles. No longer chaotic. But still ignored. You know, there's some interesting stuff in here. There are mountain trolls riding grap horns through Hungary. There are Giants with winged tattoos on their backs walking through the Greek seas, and the werewolves have gone entirely underground. Great. Great. Let's get out there. I'll get the team together. Harry, I get it. Paperwork is boring. Not for you. I'm busy enough with my own. There are people and beasts that fought alongside Voldemort in the Great Wizarding Wars. These are allies of darkness. This, combined with what we've just unearthed at Theodore Knott's, could mean something, but if the head of magical law enforcement isn't reading his files... But I don't need to read it. I'm out there hearing about it. Feed or not, it was me who heard the rumors about the time turner and who, ex who acted upon it. You really don't need to tell me off. Do you fancy a toffee? Don't tell Ron. You're changing the subject. I truly am. Toffee? Can't. We're off sugar at the moment. You know you can get addicted to that stuff? What can I say? My parents were dentists. I was bound to rebel at some point. 
40 is leaving it a little late, but you've just done a brilliant thing. You're certainly not being told off. I just need you to look at your paperwork every now and again, that's all. Consider this a gentle nudge from the Minister for Magic. There's in her emphasis, he nods. How's Ginny? How's Albus? Seems I'm as good at fatherhood as I am at paperwork. How's Rose? How's Hugo? You know, Ron says he thinks I see more of my secretary, Ethel, than him. Do you think there's a point where we made a choice, parent of the year or ministry official of the year? Go on, go home to your family, Harry. The Hogwarts Express is about to depart for another year. Enjoy the time you've got left, and then come back here with a fresh head and get these files read. You really think this uh, could all mean something? It could do, but if it does, we'll find a way to fight it, Harry. We always have. She smiles once more, pops a toffee in her mouth, and then leaves the office. Harry is left alone. He packs his bag, he walks out of the office and down a corridor. The weight of the world is upon his shoulders. He walks tired into a telephone box. He dials 62442. Farewell, Harry Potter. He sends away from the Ministry of Magic. I'd rather you didn't breathe on me quite so much. Rose, what are you doing here? Rose, and what's happened to your accent? <clears throat> but, sorry, Hermione, he's got you mixed up with someone else. How do you know my name? And with no time to lose, let's bring on our first champion. Facing a Swedish snort snout, I give you Cedric Diggory. And Albus radi uh, readies his, hand his wand. <laughs> and Cedric Diggory has entered the stage, and he seems ready. Scared, but ready. He dodges this way, he dodges that. The girls swoon as he dives for cover. They cry as one Don't damage our Diggory, Mr. Dragon! Albus, something is going wrong. The time turner's it's shaking. The ticking begins, an incessant, dangerous ticking. It's coming from the time turner. And Cedric skirts left, and he dives right, and he readies his wand. What has this young, brave, handsome man got up his sleeves now? Expelliarmus! Cedric's wand is summoned to Albus's hand. But no! What's this? Is it dark magic, or is it something else entirely? His wand is flying away. Cedric Diggory is disarmed. Albus, I think the time turner, something's, something's wrong. The time turner's ticking gets louder still. It's all going wrong for Diggers. That could be the end of the task for him. The end of the tournament. Scorpius grabs Albus. There's a crescendo in the ticking and a flash. And time is turned back to the present with Albus howling and hollering in pain. Ah! <laughs> Albus, did it hurt you? Albus, are you, are you? What happened? There must be some time limit. The time turner must have some kind of time limit. Do you think we've done it? Do you think we've changed anything? Suddenly the stage is invaded from all sides by Harry, Ron, who is now has a side parting in his hair and whose wardrobe choices have become rather more staid, Ginny and Draco. Scorpius looks at them all and slips the time turner back into his pocket. Albus looks at them rather more blankly. He's in a lot of pain. I, I told you, I told you, I saw them. I think we're about to find out. Hello, Dad, I is something wrong? Harry looks at his son displeasingly. Yes. You could say that. Albus collapses onto the floor. Harry and Ginny rush to help. Ooh, have you read this before? No, I'm so excited. I saved it. <laughs> you gave her Delphi. You didn't tell her the plot. That's amazing. That's really good. That's really good. I do know some of the arc, but I don't know the specifics. Okay. 
It'd be great. You're going on a journey with your hair. I know, it's amazing. Yeah, it's really beautiful. I did a little bit of homework, but okay. like, I haven't read the script yet. Like, looked up like a summary of the plot. Uh-huh. Okay. It's all time travel. Who knew? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, we did because we read it. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I feel like it's like, you know how they say when you see a gun in the first act? You know, it's like we saw yeah. Time Turner however yeah. many books ago. Yeah, we, we saw Time known. Turner in the third book. Yeah. We should have known. We should have known. Yeah. Yeah. Can't just let that go. All right. Will you tell us who you are and what you are doing here? My name is Emma Middleton. I'm an actor, and I'm reading Delphi. Which you... How roughly, roughly have a sense of yeah. Delphi's arc. I know she's got a real great journey. <laughs> real fun. Beautiful. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. And you also get to, for the first time, wrap your head around the convoluted time travel narrative. Yeah, I'm pretty excited to see how that goes. Yeah. So are you also a Harry Potter fan? Big time, lifelong. Okay. I grew up with them. They were always like the right age for yeah. me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So very meaningful. I read them in English mm-hmm. and then I read them in French, some of them. That's impressive. Well... And so why hadn't you read the play yet? Uh, well, I knew this event was coming up, and it's so nice to hear a play read out loud. It's a completely different experience than it is to read it by yourself. That's you know. really lovely. I'm kind of jealous of the people who get to actually encounter this for the first time, like, as a play, rather than trying to do it all in their own heads. Yeah, it makes a huge difference. I mean, the final ingredient to any play is the audience. And I guess we all get to be each other's audiences? <laughs> totally. Sorry, yeah, no, this is high-tech technology I use to literally steal your souls. Um, I would let you. Awesome. That's good to know. Yeah, and this is a fancy pop filter. Um, Okay, so one by one, I'm going to ask you to tell me who you are and what you're doing here today. Uh, I'm Nick, and I'm playing Voldemort today, although I missed my first cue, but that's why I'm here. But you are also playing at least one other role. Yeah, to step in at the beginning for Harry and a couple of other people, which I wasn't prepared for, which is why it came out in a mix of accents and uh, emotions. You're doing a great job. Uh, How did you get involved in this? Um, My lovely partner has organized this, so uh, I volunteered, (laughs) not knowing what I was volunteering for. Mostly I made a lot of popcorn. Should be eating that popcorn. Uh... Are you a big Harry Potter fan? I'm actually not. But, like, I'm here, so... (laughs) I think I might be now. Yeah. Are you enjoying the story so far? Yes. What about you? Uh, My name is Erica, and I'm friends of Laura and Nick, so I came out to support them. Okay. (laughs) What about you? Are you a, a Potter fan? Have you read Cursed Child already? No, I haven't read this book yet, so um, yeah, first experience, pretty good. But yeah, I read the original books when I was very young, so yeah. Do you think you would have read this if it wasn't being offered to you as a reading? No. (laughs) Are you enjoying the story so far? The story's good. It's got all of the, like, the same elements of the original books, you know? It's like they just, they took, like, the favorite bits of, like, all the fans and just stuck them in one book. That's kind of how it feels right now. Yeah. But. A lot of people have said it reads like fan fiction. It does. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree with that so far. <laughs> what about you? Hi. Um, no, that was great. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Kate, and um, I met Laura in high school, and I'm just having, happening to like visit on the West Coast right now. So, oh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, she was like, what are you doing? And I was like, doing whatever you want me to do. So, yeah, I'm like, okay, this is not my realm of things, but it's cool. I like it. I don't know. I walked in, and I was like, what? is this but it's yeah it's like really nice i like it i also walked in and was like what is this yeah you're getting quite the vancouver experience oh yeah yeah like definitely it's just yeah this is not how i pictured my saturday but i i like it and i feel like this is a saturday i'm gonna remember for a long time you know what i mean it's one of those things it's like you're telling your grandkids you're like in my day I, w- I went to a weird converted church and listened to my friends read Harry Potter out loud, and it was awesome. In my day, we read books out loud to each other in Rosicrucian temples. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, you know, I don't know. It's cool. I like it. It's good. Yeah. And 
And do you know what is going to happen in this story? I have no clue. I was actually so into Harry Potter as a kid. Like, I, like, bomb read them. Like, I was like, the second I got it, I was like, I'm going to read this tonight. You know? And then, I don't know. Uh, I think the last ones just took too long to come out for me. And I read them out of necessity. I was like, well, I've got to. And then I wasn't really into them anymore. I was like, okay, well, that was good. But, like, I've got, my, like, my best friend back home. She's hardcore Harry Potter. Like, totally writes fan fiction and stuff like that and actually yeah when you mentioned this sort of does read like fan fiction it's like i'm sure she's read it 16 four, like million times and i'm like i didn't really know it existed so it's cool yeah it's, it's like i like this it's like a revamp of like childhood you know what i mean i don't know yeah i like it it's cool. like that nice nostalgic feeling yeah exactly like i'm, I'm digging the nostalgia and it's like i like that it's so adaptable into like just a hangout you know what i mean like this is such an artsy cool hangout and you know everyone's just here being cozy and enjoying their, themselves and it's not like it's not as like here you go here's another harry potter book you know what i mean like it's it's extra in a good way Dream, Godric's Hollow, Graveyard. Young Harry stands looking at a gravestone covered in bunches of flowers. He's a small bunch of flowers in his hand. Go on, then. Lay down your grotty little flowers and then let's go. I already hate this poxy little village. I don't know why I even had the thought. Godric's Hollow, Godless Hollow. More like, the place is clearly a hive of filth. Go on, chop chop. He approaches the grave. He stands a moment more. Now. Harry, I don't have the time for this. Duddy has his cubs tonight, and you know he hates to be late. Aunt Petunia, we're the last living relatives, right? Yes. You and I, yes. And they weren't popular? You said they didn't have any friends. Lily tried, bless her, she tried. It wasn't her fault, but she repelled people by her very nature. It was her intensity. It was in her manner. It was her way. And your father, obnoxious man, extraordinarily obnoxious. No friends, neither of them. So my question is, why are there so many flowers? Why are there, so, why are there flowers all over the grave? And Petunia looks around. She sees all the flowers as if for the first time, and it moves her hugely. She approaches them and then sits beside her sister's grave, trying hard to fight the emotions as they come to her, but succumbing all at the same time. Oh, yes, well, I suppose there are a few. Must have blown over from the other graves, or someone's playing a trick. Yes, I think that's most likely. Some young rapscallion with too much time on his hands has gone around collecting flowers from all the other gra graves and deposited them here. But they're all marked with their names. Lily and James, what you did, we will never forget. Lily and James, your sacrifice, There is a stench of guilt up on the air. Get away! Get away from there! She pulls him back. Voldemort's hand rises in the air above the potter's gravestone. The rest of him rises after. We don't see his face, but his body provides a jagged, horrific shape. I knew it. This place is dangerous. The sooner we leave Godric's Hollow, the better. Young Harry is pulled from the stage, but turns to face Voldemort. Do you still see with my eyes. Harry Potter. Young Harry exits, disturbed as Albus bursts from within Voldemort's cloak. He reaches out a desperate hand towards his dad. Dad! Dad! There's a word spoken in parcel tongue. of the room, whispering around everyone, words said with an unmistakable voice, the voice of Voldemort.
lost in time, probably permanently, and, and you're worrying you're, what your dad might think about it? I'll never understand the two of you. There's a lot to understand. Dad's pretty complicated. And you're not? Not to question your taste in women, but you fancied, well... I did, didn't I? I mean, what she did to Craig... Let's not think about that. Let's focus on the fact that we have no wands, no brooms, no means of returning to our time. All we have is our wits, and... No, that's all. Our wits, and we have to stop her. You can the old Reiki train is running late, boys? Sorry? If you're waiting on the old Reiki train, you'll be, uh, need to take in his running late train. Works on the line. Uh, it's on, uh, it's on your minute time, brother. Late. <laughs> oh, um, Alvis, um, uh, oh, he gave them a timetable at some point. Um, Alvis takes it and examines it. His face changes as he takes the enormous, in, in, enormous information. Hmm. Scorpius just stares at the station master. I know where she is. You understood that? Look at the date on the timetable. The 30th October 1981. Day before Hallow's Eve. 39 years ago. But why is she... Why is she Oh. <laughs> the death of my grandparents. The attack on my dad as a baby. The moment when Voldemort's curse rebounded on himself. She's not trying to bring about her prophecy. She's trying to prevent the big one. The big one? The one with the power to vanquish the Dark Lord approaches. And uh, born, born to, to the, <laughs> born to the those who have who thrice, have thrice defied, defied him. him. Born, born as, as the seventh month, month dies. dies. It's a prophecy. It's a prophecy. It's my fault. Oh, I told her that the prophecies can be broken. I told her the whole logic of prophecies is questionable. In 24 hours time, Voldemort curses himself, trying to kill the baby Harry Potter. Delphi is trying to prevent that curse. She's going to kill Harry herself. We need to get to Godric's Hollow, now. Act four, scene three, Godric's Hollow, 1981. Albus and Scorpius walk through the center of Godric's Hollow, and it's a bustling, beautiful little village. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, there's no visible sign of attack that I can see. This is Godric's Hollow? Your dad's never taken you? N no, he tried a few times, but I refused. Well, there's no time for a tour. We have a murderous witch to save the world from. But regard, the church, St. Jerome's. A church becomes visible. It's magnificent. Yep. And St. Jerome's graveyard is supposedly magnificently haunted. And that's where the statue of Harry and his parents will be. My dad has a statue? Oh, not yet, but he will, hopefully. And this. This house is where Bathilda Bagshot lives, lived, or lives. The Bathilda Bagshot? A history of magic, Bathilda Bagshot? Very same. Oh my, that's her. Wow. <laughs> my geek, my geekness is a quivering. Scorpius. And here it is. Oh, the home of James, Lily, and Harry Potter. That was your line, you said. <laughs> the home of James, Harry, Lily, and Harry Potter. Sorry. A young, attractive couple leave the house with a baby in a pushed chair. Albus moves towards them. Scorpius pulls him back. They can't see you, Albus. It might damage time. We're not doing that. Not this time. But this means she hasn't... We've made it. She hasn't... So what do we do now? Get ready to fight her? Because she's pretty fierce. Yes. We haven't really thought this one through, have we? What do we do now? How do we protect my dad? Act 4, scene 4, Ministry of Magic... Then years! Years I spent there alone without knowing what I was or why I was there. Without knowing that anybody cared. I did not wish to become attached to you. Protecting yourself even then. No. I was protecting you. Dumbledore attempts to reach out to the portrait, but he can't. He begins to cry, but tries to hide it. But I had to meet you in the end, 11 years old, and you were so brave so good. You walked uncomplainingly along the path that had been laid at your feet. Of course I loved you. And I knew that it would happen again, all over again, and that where I lived, loved, I would cause irreparable damage. I am no fit person to love. I've never loved without causing harm. It would have hurt me less if you told me this then. 
I was, I was blind. That is what love does. I couldn't see that you needed to hear that this closed up, tricky, dangerous old man loved you. It isn't true that I never complained. Harry, there is never a perfect answer to this messy emotional world. Perfection is beyond the reach of humankind, beyond the reach of magic. In every shining moment of happiness is that drop of poison, the knowledge that pain will come again. Be honest to those you love. Show your pain. To suffer is as human as to breathe. You said that to me once before. It is all I have to offer you tonight. Don't go. Just walk away. Those that we love never truly leave us, Harry. There are things that death cannot touch. Paint and memory and love. I love you too, Dumbledore. I know. He is gone and Harry is alone. Draco enters. Okay, so my name's Asher, and I was reading a couple of parts here. I was reading Harry and Scorpius Malfoy. Had you read Cursed Child before? I had not. I had not. You know, I was waiting for the perfect opportunity, and look what presented itself. I didn't know what I was waiting for, but I feel like a time-turner Asher had gone back in time and said, hey, don't read that yet. There's going to be a little stage reading thing, and that was the best way to go through the play, don't you think? I, I, it blew my mind. Are you a Pot uh, Harry Potter fan? Is this I, something I, you I would have read? I'm a Harry Potter fan. I would say in this room, I am definitely a casual fan. Okay. Um, but I'm a, I'm a fan, yeah. Yeah, I, I saw all the movies growing up, and uh, I haven't read all the books. I read, okay, I did this in a weird way. I read the beginning of book five. I read book, book six, and I read book seven. So I, I, did, things that, I did things that way. That's my, that's my approach. Beginning of book five. Yeah. And only part of it. That's, uh, that's my, you know how like there's ways of watching Star Wars? Like you watch Star Wars 2 and then 4 and 5 and then like the first bit of 1. So you're something. recommending this as like a viable approach. Half of 5. I turned out all right. You know, I, I'm, a, I'm a fan. I, 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 yeah, I'm all right with it. Okay. Yeah. Right. yeah. I can't, yeah. 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 Okay. So Harry, Harry or uh, Scorpius, favorite character? Oh, um. Well, you know, there's like, there's young Harry, there's adult Harry, there's Scorpius, who has a hint of Malfoy, but you know what? He's not as much the spitting image of his father as I thought he would be. He's sort of a meek young child. Uh, I think, I think I gotta go for Scorpius here. You know, I gotta give him the time of day because Harry had his day to shine with seven movies, eight movies, right? And seven books. Yeah. You know what? Like, I thought, I thought Scorpius was a, was a charming young man. Despite, not because I played him in this, in this stage reading. That has nothing to do with my decision here. He was already my favorite character in the play. He was, he was pretty great. He was pretty great. How much of a Harry Potter fan are you? Uh, okay, so I had seen all of the movies once and read the first six books and never read the seventh book. And then I started making a Harry Potter podcast. And so I recently reread all of the books and rewatched all of the movies in the past year and a half. Um, but I also have a very a sizable listener base of like deep cut Harry Potter fans. So despite not being like a long-term nerd, I have um, a shocking quantity of Harry Potter knowledge now. Do you get a lot of people like correcting you on things? Oh, constantly. Oh my God, constantly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause all of our listeners know more about Harry Potter than we do for sure. Um, so we like record an episode and we're like have these theories and then people write in and correct us about facts and they have read more than we have, and so it's it's good. It's good. It's a back and forth. We all learn together. It is good back and forth. Yeah. You know, it reminds me. I heard that um, when George R. R. Martin wrote Game of Thrones, he had some early on diehard fans. Like this is pre TV show, right? Yeah. And there was like a couple people in particular who kept writing him when he'd come out with a new book, saying like, No, no, it's not right. Like that map contradicts a map you referenced in Chapter Four, in Daenerys Four of Book One. And he was like, Oh crap. Like, they called me on it. And so, basically, he made them, like, he had them become, like, co-editors of his book 
because they like knew the material better than he did. Yeah. That happens. Often on a lot of shows, the wiki, like the fan-made wiki of a show, will end up being used by the writers of the show because they're like, we've done like so many conversations about this, but like the fans know the canon way better than we do so we'll go to the fan wiki and look up what whether we've done this story before so we don't re, like redo it in like season six yeah. you I mean, know? also just because you write something doesn't mean you remember it either oh, totally. yeah. how could you be expected to and with a, with a world like harry potter or game of thrones or anything like that it's so dense how could one person be expected to you a world that garners a wikipedia for it mm-hmm. a whole wikipedia yeah that's like a lot. So I think, you know what, I don't hold it to George R. R. Martin or J.K. Rowling. And you know what? There are continuity errors in Cursed Child. All right. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm stepping into difficult territory here okay. because this is the same world that I'm going to go into as like when people say, why didn't the eagles just fly the ring to Mordor? Yep. Right? But I'm going to go there anyway. Okay. So and there's probably a good response to this. But why didn't Voldemort use a time turner to go back and... Do to you know do things himself, like go back and fix his own past. That's an excellent point. I just think that's why the whole timeline thing. That's why it's like you know what you know, people shouldn't play with timelines, but I think writers should be as equally uh, wary of timeline pl- playing with time because unless it's like Back to the Future where that's the whole thing, yeah. it becomes very tricky because now that time travel is like a viable means of just getting around in the Wizarding World. Yeah. Now there could just be people or wizards yeah. in any time flying around. I think we just have to do a lot of being like, well, time travel's not real, so <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you just sure. go right, just sure. go right like ahead and make it work. Disregards want. all of these concerns. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was it fun? Did you guys have fun? Now I've got popcorn in my mouth. It was super fun. That yeah, I'm amazing. making sure to only talk to you when you have popcorn in your mouth. Good, great. This is <laughs> making me come off really well. That was so good. It was super fun. Like, the characters are great. As much as I might have dissed Harry Potter in the previous sound sample. Um, like, as soon as anybody's like, oh, do you want to be Voldemort? You're like, oh, come on, all right, okay. <laughs> this is my <laughs> arm. <laughs> ah. It was good. I really, this isn't going to come across in an audio medium, but I really appreciated that whenever you were Voldemort, you put your hood up. Well, I was trying to, and then I'd be Ron, because I forgot, because nobody told me I was going to be Ron. And I just naturally sort of feel like I look like Ron, so I just have to be like, hmm. <laughs> hey, kid. Hey kids, head down. What's up? Very light, but then you'd have one line, and you sort of have to go back to it and be like, "But also, yeah. acting's hard." <laughs> Apparently, I don't know how the hell anyone does it. It seems exhausting. I wouldn't recommend it. No, no. We all have better things to do. What did you think? This is your first time with this story. Yeah, I was super charmed. I'm so relieved that I liked it. I had a lot riding on liking it, so I'm really glad that I could take it into my heart. And also, hearing it read was the best first-time experience it could possibly have been. I didn't have to do all the voices myself, which is lovely. Yeah, it was really fun. Have I gotten your name on? Okay, will you introduce yourself and say what you were doing here? Um, my name is Megan, and I was here because I'd heard that there was going to be a live reading of The First Child, and I was like, yes, I'm going to put off reading the book because I can have it read to me on a Saturday night with brownies in my hand. Yeah, that's the best way to experience it. Yeah, yeah. And it was, it like, I, I have to say, I read it already, and I feel like I liked it even more hearing it in this context. Oh, yeah, and there's so much joy in the performances. Like, it wasn't like, oh, I'm a professional actor, and I'm going to make this. It was like, no, 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 I'm a, I'm a professional Harry Potter fan, and I would like to imbue this with, like, my joyful spirit. So there was, that that adds a certain something. So would you recommend this to other people who have maybe been putting off reading the play, like, as a way to encounter it, get a group of friends together and read it? Yes, I think this is the in- ideal way to experience it, especially because, like, When you've grown up with Harry Potter, like, the idea of collective experiences of Harry Potter, I think for so long, like, that was a, like, you lined up together, you went to the movies together, like, you talked to your friends about it, like, 
I think making sure that you experience it with your friends is kind of key. Yeah. Yeah. I can't believe there isn't like hundreds of these going on across the country. Thank you, beloved listeners, for joining me for episode Omicron. Omicron? Omicron of Witch Please. You can find the rest of our episodes on ohwitchplease.ca or through your podcast subscription mechanism of choice. If you choose iTunes or anything else that lets you rate or review us, please do that. It is one of only three ways we are capable of feeling love. The second way? Tweet at us at ohwitchplease. The third, check out our merch at society6.com slash ohwitchplease and buy something with our charming and intelligent faces on it. Special thanks, as always, to our erstwhile tech support and the robot of our hearts, Trevor Chow Fraser. Hi, how are you doing? Who is always, to a greater or lesser degree, responsible for making this whole thing run smoothly. And finally, enormous thanks to Laura, Nicole, Emma... Nick, Asher, and everybody who spoke to me at the live reading. It was magical. Our next episode will feature Marcel and Neil's long-awaited discussion of the Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them trailer, so stay tuned for that. And then you know what? Your original hosts are having a mini reunion in Boston, where the fine students of Tufts University, shout out to Elise and Emma, have invited us to speak and we'll be recording it so you'll get to hear it too. And I'm going to squeeze that baby hippogriff so hard. But until then, later witches. Witches.